Okay, here's a little video uh, which the internet's lacking. Um, this is your Z3 drive shaft, and uh, all the forums talk about a whole bunch of shit, and uh, nobody's really nailing it on the head. Here's what I mean. Uh, sure, you can pull your drive shaft off. You can find a bunch of things wrong with it. You can find bad unis. You can find a bad center support bearing, uh, out around drive shaft. Whatever, whatever you want to find, that's fine. Here's a, an example of a car that was brought to the dealer. They replaced the entire drive line, and it still had the drive line clunk. And nobody can seem to get rid of it. It's real simple why it's there. Um, it's very easy to screw this up. And basically what the drive line clunk is, well, in most cases, I'm not talking about if, you're, if your drive line's healthy, okay, and you still have the clunk, well, you could have backlash issues in your rear and all that jazz. But, okay, if there's oil been in it and, you know, you don't have 700 horse running to it, you're probably okay. So, here's the deal. Uh, you go to let out the clutch, and uh, your engine tries to transfer power to the drive shaft. They have the flex disc that goes in between the drive shaft and your engine, uh, sorry, your transmission flange. What happens is the engine tries to, transmission flange tries to push, push in a counterclockwise direction. It starts transferring energy, but that disc acts as a spring. And it flexes a little bit, it loads with spring pressure. Now, as soon as you go to make a gear change or depress the clutch again, what happens is the drive shaft hasn't moved because it's being restricted by the weight of the car and the loaded spring kicks back your output shaft ever so slightly and clashes all your gear train in the transmission. So you get a, ready? If you hear that sound when you, and that's a great sound, I pretty much mimicked it perfectly. If you're hearing that, it's spring back of that flex disc. Now, we found this installed from the dealer incorrectly. What do I mean by that? Here's why. I'm going to show you three. Here, I'll get that light out of the way. Each uh, hub and drive shaft occupies only three bolts. So here's, let's say your drive shaft is here here and here that means your transmission is here here and here see how that works okay now notice there's grouping here this is important and a lot of the instructions actually only come in uh german so it's hard for you to understand what they're trying to tell you but um what you have here is uh, a certain way that this needs to go on now i told you everything uh goes in a counterclockwise direction as you're looking at the back of the tranny so let's say we're looking at the back of the tranny and if we give this the transmission, these three, and give this the drive shaft, we have a problem. Because we have a compressive force. We're trying to travel this way. We're compressing over the thin part. So this turns into a bag of mush. It compresses to all to shit. Okay? And completely, you get this huge spring because this whole area almost closes up under pressure. This is a cutout in the middle. This stretches. So you got compression here and you got stretching force here. You follow what I'm saying so far? If you don't, hang it up. You shouldn't you should try a different hobby. So uh, you have a stretching going on here, pulling this apart. The rubber band effect. Now when the person lets in the clutch, all of this unwinds basically and whack. You have your input shaft being tossed backwards. So how you're supposed to do this is like this. You'll have engine here, your basically your output of your transmission, and you have uh, your drive line here. So basically you push onto this. What happens is this little gap closes up, but now you're pushing on this whole meat. This doesn't compress. So, so now you have very little compression. You have the absorption you need, but you don't have a massive ton of compression. The stretching is happens in here, but we don't really give a shit about that. This is just a connector piece to keep the thing unison. So basically now you have much less spring, uh, customer lets in the clutch and um, no problems, no massive spring back. Yes, there's a little bit, but not like it was before. So, and then also, you know, flex your disc, make sure you don't have massive cracking like this. This is cracking because this was stretched. Like I said, it was the rubber band effect. So there you have a BMW dealer installing it the incorrect way. A little trick on this, just so you know, if you look at these uh, these uh, flex discs, you're going to see arrows at the top uh, around the outside. Now watch this. 
This arrow is facing to the left. That arrow is facing to the right. It's going to alternate to the left, to the right. Very simply how they want you to do this. You can install the disc this way or this way. It doesn't really matter. But what they want you to do is take this arrow and make it face the transmission. If you do, what's going to happen? Ready? Facing the transmission. There you go. Transmission is going to be mounted to these three pads. Drive line to these three pads. So now you have compression force when you go to take off, not stretching force. <laughs> so uh, that's how that works. Now notice if I move it one over, eh, the arrow's facing towards the drive line. No good. So if you've done all kinds of shit and spent all kinds of money and bought a $900 drive line or the 300 rebuilt piece of shits, um, well, scratch that. I mean, yeah, they put new U joints in, but yeah. So this this car was clacking so bad it was you you push in the clutch and it was it would turn heads. That's how bad it was. So um, by giving yourself a new flex disc and installing it the correct way, not like BMW dealers do, uh, you should be all set. Okay, there's the video that everybody's been looking for. Um, of course, I had to actually get in here. Uh, I wish somebody had posted it for me, but whatever. Here we go. Pay it forward. Bye-bye. Um, Have a nice day.